I'm, the, I'm Erica Yigzau, I'm the Senior Vice President here and I'm also an Oregon State University Master Gardener through the Extension Service. So I'm wearing two hats today. So you're welcome to ask me any kind of questions you have about your you know, herbs or anything you want to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about organic herb gardening. We had a session last month and I know some of you came to that on organic gardening and quite a few of you said, well, we'd really like some specific information about organic herb gardening. And that is great because actually Herbs are one of the easiest things to grow organically as a general rule. So that makes it really, you know, really nice, really practical. It's a great thing to get started with. And actually growing herbs in your garden is an organic technique. So it's a really nice time. I don't want to just stand here for too long talking to you. So I want to keep this presentation pretty short and then we can go outside and I'm going to show you some things. I actually brought some herbs in so I can show you guys how to pot up some herbs. Quite a f I do quite a few plant clinics where people bring in their plants to various locations. There's master gardener clinics at pretty much all of the farmers markets this year. Uh, we have them at various garden centers and quite often people will come in with their straggly dead Near or near dead plants <laughs> saying oh dear what have I done I've got such a brown thumb I've killed yet another lot of plants so, and there's some really simple things that lots of people do and they think they're helping their herbs and they're actually um, essentially killing them lots of people overwater their herbs when you think about most of the common herbs that we want to grow most of them are from the Mediterranean so think of that climate. They don't like too much water they're used to growing on limestone with very little supplemental water. If you water them too much too much will kill them, but even just moderate amounts of water, you'll actually reduce the amount of aromatic compounds in the herb. So we've done some experiments where we've grown various rows of our lavender with supplemental watering and other rows with absolutely no supplemental watering, and our yield of essential oil is almost double because the plant, that's part of the plant's defense mechanisms, and quite often when, when plants have um, limited water and they're having to struggle a little bit for survival, they will actually produce more essential oil because the essential oil attracts pollinators and repels um, the nasty bugs that could attack them. So it's the same with grapes. That's why they actually don't irrigate grapes because you get fewer grapes, but they, are, they have more concentrated sugars in them. So overwatering your herbs can kill them and it also can reduce the quality. So it's really important not to water too much. And the other most common problem is that people bury their plants. So when I'll show you exactly how deep you want to plant your plant. It's pretty much exactly the same depth as it was in the pot. A lot of people mound the soil up a little bit and that gives the fungi and, and various little nasty bugs an opportunity to get into the stem of the plant and kill it or get some rot happening. So We're not into DIY anymore, we're into GIY, so growing it ourselves. I meet so many people who say they grow herbs, but they still pop off down to the store and buy their peppermint tea bags and you know which is great because peppermint tea is great you know I'm not saying don't buy your tea bags but there's really no need it's like you can so easily grow your own herbs and it's so easy to harvest them and make your own teas it's just so easy to dry them I mean when you think about the cost of those tiny little and I shouldn't use any brand names but you know the, the regular little spice racks that you see down at the store oregano thyme peppermint, all those herbs you can grow so easily in your garden. You can grow massive quantities. You'll be able to give them all away as gifts. It costs you virtually nothing. I mean, seeds, you can get a whole packet of seeds for like $2 and that'll grow you a hundred plants. And I mean, you only need one or two to supply all your needs for a year. So it's really a cheap, easy, and really easy to do organically is to grow your own herbs. Who here knows what organic is or thinks they know what organic is? Okay. Okay, so tell me what you think organic means. I'm going to put you on the spot, Gail. Okay. <laughs> Growing without um, chemical pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's one definition. That's what I was going to say, was basically growing in the, in the nature's way. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of... Um, different definitions of organic. So I think it's really important right at the beginning to, to define what we're going to talk about. There's the National Organic Program, which defines organic standards for our commercial agriculture. We're talking about home organic gardening. So I'm not going to get into all of the NOP and OMRI products that are approved for use in a commercial farm. That's a whole nother week's program. So we don't have time to talk about there that. There are some pesticides and herbicides that are organic 
that are approved for use in organic farming. Um, my emphasis is always on low input, so I don't believe you should just head off down to your nearest big box store and buy bags and bags of essentially you know, fertiliser or what have you just because they've got an organic label. If you want to go that route, it's definitely healthier to go the organic route, but there's so much you can do at home to create your own little ecosystem. And it, your ecosystem feeds all of your plants and your soil and your insects and creates a nice little loop. And ideally, it's a closed loop. So you're, you're collecting all of your stuff at the end of the summer, you're composting it, you're using that compost in the spring on your garden, that's providing some of your nitrogen. Most people can't make enough nitrogen because nitrogen is the big issue because of all the rain in Oregon. You know, it washes away nitrogen. So in Oregon, nitrogen is our limiting factor and most people have to buy in some sort of nitrogen. But it really is, it's fun to see exactly how much you can do yourself. So a lot of people, um, I was just talking to someone, for example, who had rabbits and she had no idea that you can use rabbit poop as a fertilizer. And actually through Master Gardeners, we'll even tell you exactly how much rabbit poop equals how many pounds of nitrogen fertilizer. So there's so many things you can use that you might not even realize. So it's a really fun thing to get into and see how sustainable you can become. Does anyone here have chickens? We've got a couple, that's good. I was going to stick to the rabbits for a minute. I have a friend who uh, raises uh, bunnies yeah. and she has 40 of them uh, because the rabbit poop is excellent for roses. And oh, it are. is, yeah. Do you do anything with roses or roses? Yeah, rabbits, chickens. Um, rabbit, llama and alpaca poop's great because you don't have to compost it first. Chicken poop, you need to compost first because it's so high in nitrogen. If you put it on, it'll burn your plants. So if they're like free range and they're going around scratching it into the ground, then that's fine. But don't go pick it up out of the coop and stick it directly on the garden. Compost it first. But yeah, without... Animals really help, even just a couple of animals, help you keep that loop going. And you know, chickens are fantastic. I have chickens. They are my favorite pets out of all my animals because they actually they give you eggs, they eat the kitchen scraps, they eat a little bit of organic grain, and they take care of so many insects. I've got one really tame chicken who follows me around the garden, like right beside me, and I do not like spiders. I know they're good for the soil food web. I just don't like them. So she comes along beside me and she will snap up all the spiders because we have tons of spiders, and she'll just snap them up, and she doesn't eat all of them, but she keeps them under control. So it's so nice because our neighbors, we seem to have a lot of spiders in our area, and our neighbors are always spraying. You know, they have the pest control people up to spray them, and I keep offering to lend them my chicken, but you know, so. It's amazing how you can get things to sort of start working in this cycle, even on a really small scale. So it's kind of fun. But basically, organic, we want to respect natural patterns, which is exactly what you were saying. So we want to let nature run its course. So the minute you see a couple of aphids, don't freak out and go and try and buy some organic spray, which you can find. You can find organic aphid spray. But if you wait a little bit, the lacewings will arrive. So, you know, you can spray them off with your hose in the meantime. So you just let nature have its little patterns. So let's see if I can make this work. D does it help to put coffee grounds? Coffee grounds, um, the question was does it help to put coffee grounds? Coffee grounds are an excellent source of nitrogen, so that's just another, you can think of it as a mulch that does provide you some nitrogen once it gets broken down. So some people um, compost it first, other people put it on straight. I've used it both ways and it doesn't seem to hurt the plants, so. I want to say it doesn't work for indoor house plants, I've tried that before and it's maybe too acidic. Yeah, yeah, usually Houseplants are working in a really small little environment. So houseplants are their own creature because an ecosystem requires some volume to work. So when you're talking about potted plants or houseplants, you know, maybe you have potted herbs. A lot of people are in apartments. They have them potted up on their balcony. It's pretty hard to get an ecosystem cycle happening on that kind of level. So um, usually the best thing to do is just to repot your plants into some good quality organic potting soil once a year. But outside, they work great and you can get them free at Starbucks. There used to be tons but now everyone seems to have cottoned onto it so they never have them there anymore. But lots of other um, coffee shops, if you ask them, they'll save them. And they love it because otherwise they have to pay to have it taken away. So, And any time you can do that, you can keep that sort of waste out of the waste stream. It really helps cut down on greenhouse gas. It helps reuse what we have. I mean, it's just silly to put it in the, in the landfill when it's a source of nitrogen because actually producing fertilizer is a really... Um, 
nasty production method for the environment. So anytime we can create that from waste product, we're all helping the environment.